Hello and hello. Thank you for joining me. My name is Maddie, and I have been doing the impossible my whole life. I'm going to show you one of my favorite pieces of magic because I don't have too much time, but I want to show you something really good. And this is, um, this is my favorite trick. This is actually the first magic trick that I learned, and I've performed this all over the world. And it's a piece that I've grown with, and it's also grown with me. I don't need the whole deck. I just need six cards. Three, four, five, and six. Three for you, and three for you. And can you check out these cards? Make sure they're normal. There's nothing special about them. Three blacks, and three reds. There is actually something a little bit special about them. I've uh, designed these cards. <laughs> This is my deck of cards. <laughs> so, I'm very proud of that. Um, what I will do is I want you to see that every single card is a normal card, even though they are hand-drawn. Red, red, and red, and black, and black, and black. Usually this trick, and most of sleight of hand magic, uses something that I don't have, something that I'm going to ask you to borrow in a little bit, your two hands. But first, watch very closely. We're going to spread and then mix the cards one by one. That is with a red card over here, followed by a black, a red, a black, a red, the black. And I said I would need to borrow something. Can you guess what that is? <laughs> your hands. Can you open your fingers? Hold your palms towards you with your fingers open and slowly push your hands together so that your fingers interlace one by one as if you were praying. This is the position of the cards. Red, black, red, black, red, black, all the way through. The same thing that's happening over there is what's happening over here. Pull your fingers apart. Close your fingers. Put one hand on top of the other. Because you do that over here, even over here we didn't touch anything. Because you do that over there, the same thing happens over here. We should now have black, black, and black, and every single one of the reds together. <laughs> now, one of the rules in magic is that you never repeat the same trick twice. I don't follow the rules, so <laughs> I'll do it again. And that is with even more clarity, with some cards face down and some cards face up, so that there's absolutely no doubt as to what is where at any moment. So red and red, and red, and black, and black, and black. Black, and red, and black, and red, black, and red. One more time. Same position. <laughs> just like that, the same exact thing should happen over here. Even though these were just mixed, red, 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 black, 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 one by one. So they were interlacing. Because you separate them over there, they should be separated over here. One more time. All the blacks and all the reds. Can you take these and you take these? And you guys mix them this time. So you put a card and then he can put a card. Keep going. And I know what some of you are thinking. This man looks a lot like me. Maybe he's my son. <laughs> <laughs> Show you there is no collusion. Is it okay if we check the cards one more time? They really are mixed one by one. Black, red, black, and red, black, red. Now I'm going to separate them into two piles. And even though they're separated, they'll never touch again. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to show you all the cards once again. Hopefully the camera can pick this up. 
but if not, I'll show it because I want you to see, especially because you're up close. So black, red, and black, black and red and black. And over here, we have red and black and red. One more time, can you interlace your fingers? And can you interlace your fingers? And uh, I already see some people in the audience interlacing their fingers. <laughs> so to speed it up, if you have hands and would like to participate, <laughs> you can interlace your fingers. Now, if you believe in magic, if you believe in magic, only if you believe in magic, pull your fingers apart and put one hand on top of the other. And I don't know if you believe in magic, I really don't, but if you do, it should work out that here we have black, black, and black, and over here, every single one of the red. Every single one of the red, thank you. Thank you, thank you guys so much. Thank you for joining me, thank you, thank you. How are you, Eric? Well, I'm great. <laughs> How are you? I'm pretty good. Good to see you. Good to see you. So I'm going to let Maddie do most of the talking here, but I just wanted to say one quick thing about the, the, the day we met, uh, which was in San Diego some years ago at a magic conference. And a friend of mine, Derek Delgadio, said, have you met Maddie Gilbert? And I said, no. And he said, you have to come over here. And I walked over, and Maddie was walking up to the table, and um, Derek said, would you show Eric something? And I had probably the same experience that most people had. When you walked up, I mentally <laughs> set the bar so low <laughs> because I thought if he can do anything, I'm going to pretend to be overwhelmed. And I didn't have to pretend at all because <laughs> Maddie does real sleight of hand, like difficult. What he's doing over there is very hard to understand if you're not a magician, but he's doing real sleight of hand techniques without hands. So... Um, Let's have a little conversation about your life. Can we start with, uh, a lot of people maybe don't know, you also don't have feet. Yeah. And uh, so let's talk about your physicality and how you were born and what, um, what okay, that is. Yeah, so it's one thing, it's funny, everybody has a question, but basically nobody asked me. I guess there's a code of etiquette <laughs> in society. But a lot of people want to know why I am the way that I am, and I was born the way that I am, and the reason that I was born this way is because when my mother was pregnant with me, um, the baby needs a few things to survive. There's an umbilical cord, and it connects you to the mother, and you're pumped with oxygen and blood and all the nutrients that you need to survive. And um, in between me and my mother, there was some sort of a problem when I was in the womb, and so I was cut off from that. And usually what happens is the babies die in the womb, um, but me, instead of dying, my little body uh, kept all the oxygen and the blood and all the important stuff for my heart and for my brain, and then it just got rid of what it, I guess it knew it didn't need. And um, that was able to get me through. So you have no hand, no feet, and yeah. where are your? Um, so on this leg, uh, well, I have a brace on this leg and a prosthetic on this leg. Okay. But basically, <laughs> it's um, my shoes are uh, are on, not on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so. That's a lot of challenge to be born with, right? So tell us maybe a little about your childhood and what that was like. Yeah, you know, um, I, I always felt pretty... I, I don't know, I, I guess when you're a child, you, you, um, you don't see anything unusual about your life and, or your circumstances. Um, we grew up in a very poor, poor family. Where were you? Uh, in Toronto. Born in Toronto and... We lived in, you know, social housing, and um, my mom had four kids, and my, my father left when I was born. Um, so we, you know, we were, we were pretty poor. We, we didn't have a lot of the things that most people had, um, and just the environment that we were in was very tough. I didn't realize it was tough at the time until I got older, 
but we used to, you know, I would be robbed every day and beaten up and just treated <laughs> horribly, um, just, just from my neighbors. <laughs> uh, that's just the way it was, so. Yes. Uh, I, I, did you have prosthetics then? Um, so it's funny, I got my prosthetics when I was young. Well, on this leg, my, my leg was turned inward a bit, so they had to cut the bone a few times and reset the, uh, the bone to, to straighten the leg. Um, and then I, I would have prosthetic as, as I was growing up to, um, but I had to learn and stuff. Usually a funny story, they, they wanted me to be at the same height as other people, which I didn't want, but I went along with because I was a little kid. And they gave me these long legs that were like stilts. <laughs> And every single day, I would fall on my face <laughs> until I came to my next appointment one day, and my, my face was all bloody, and they were like, what happened? And I, I told them, I, I, I can't walk like this. <laughs> so they gave me shorter legs. So, What about uh, school? Were you a good student? I was pretty good. Um, I, I had uh, some difficulty in school because uh, one, of the, one of the things that I didn't mention, just growing up, I always felt like everybody was looking at me, like there was a lot of heat on me at all times, and kids have no filter. <laughs> so they'll be like, hey, look at that kid. And you know, like you always feel super self-conscious. So when I was growing up, I had a language disorder, uh, which made me really self-conscious, so I wouldn't talk much, and I wouldn't really, do my homework and stuff, so you know the whole school, uh, the school system didn't really know what to do with me because they knew that I was smart, but I just didn't respond um, the way that I should have. So uh, tell us how you came to magic. So um, how old were you? You know, it's funny. I never saw magic growing up. Magic, sort of something that I knew existed, I would hear people talking about it. And to me as a kid, I thought, well, there's so many stuff that I want in my life, but everybody around me is telling me that it's not realistic, that it's impossible. So I thought, if I become a magician, then I can do ever, anything. I don't have to listen to anybody. And, you know, it's a very childish thought. It's not really how the world works, but that's how I first got interested in it. And then, um, and then I soon figured out that it was really hard, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, I, so I stayed away from it because everybody was telling me, you know, when you're young and everybody's telling you something, you just believe it and you just accept what they're telling you. So that's what happened to me. So I didn't approach magic. And one day I saw a man on television who was doing magic, but he was doing magic with his mouth and with the mind, and he was hypnotizing people and getting people um, to think of things, and he would read their thoughts. So I said, oh wow, I don't have hands, but I have a brain and I have a mouth. Maybe I can learn how to use it and, and uh, do some of this stuff. Is that how you overcame your speech problems? Yeah, so the... Were you um, a stutterer? What was the... No, issue? I just wanted, I was so nervous about talking. I, I would always repeat what I was saying back out loud and, um, the, and just repeating, and also repeating what other people said. It's like I didn't process it the first time through. Um, and so this guy who I had seen who was a mind reader, he was also very much into um, psychology and stuff and, and hypnosis. So I'd read books about self-hypnosis um, self and I would read them like how to increase your confidence and how to um, just how to convince your mind of certain things just through repetition and through affirmations every, every day. Right, so verbal magic makes sense to me. Uh, it's really hard for me to imagine how someone like you goes, I want to do sleight of hand. <laughs> what, uh, how did you get to there? So, <coughs> I, um, so with the mind reading stuff, I didn't know that there was a trick to most magic, so I would actually try to read people's minds. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's awesome. And um, I... I pretty I I became pretty good at it. I mean, there's 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 psychics that 
so, I mean, I don't know if some of them have powers, but some of them don't have powers. They're just very good at reading people. So I sort of developed those skills, and I had been using them in, in high school, basically, to do psychic readings. And I became quite proficient at it. Um, and there came a point where I didn't just want my magic to be mental or you know, something that people had imagined, something in their mind. I wanted it to be something that they could see and touch and feel. I wanted it to be real, like the guys who I looked up to who did you know, big illusions and things with cards and just you know, making magic happen in real life. So when I was um, 16 years old, I said, I'm, on my 17th birthday, I'm gonna learn how to do magic and do sleight of hand. And uh, I would just sit up in my room all night in the dark and, and practice. So for someone like me, who was learning sleight of hand as a kid, there's a whole lot of literature that teaches foundational techniques. But it's all written, none of it works for you. It's not applicable to your physical situation. So how did you even learn to... So I, um, I, I often envision what is going on mechanically without the hands involved. Were you because reading this in books? The, how to do this? Yes. Um, no. I think I just sort of learned this for everything in my life. I just see how people do things, and then I just figure out how I can do it, just by pinning stuff down and moving stuff in different directions. So that's what I did with cards. I would imagine hands moving different objects, um, and then what is the motion that's happening there, and what, what is covering it? What, is, what are they doing with their hands that's covering that so that people can't see it? and I would um, design my own techniques. So <clears throat> doing magic, is, are you a professional magician? Oh, sometimes. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm being paid. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you, but you, you go out and you do gigs and people yeah, have I, you Yeah, I do go? shows and yeah. Okay. And you've been on TV? In, yeah. I, I know Mike mentioned the Penn and Teller show. Yeah, I've been on TV. And so I started to do magic more professionally about two or three years ago. And since then, I've been able to really travel the world and perform for over 650 million people have seen my magic on television. So I've been pretty fortunate. Better than me. Well, <laughs> just more, not better. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we're going to run out of time. I want to do two more things. Let's okay. talk for a minute about what is next for you. What are you planning? What are you going to do? And you were telling me about a project that you were thinking of doing, uh, walking across America. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I, th there's a few reasons. I'm a big believer in metaphors and magic. And I view magic as something that is real, but people don't realize that it's real. And um, so it, one of the reasons why I do magic with cards is I want people to realize that they're seeing something impossible even before they see the trick. Um, and I want them to understand that metaphor. And I thought, well, what a great metaphor for me to do something even more magical. I was born without feet. What if I walk across America? And it's something I've, ever, I've always wanted to do ever since I was a little kid having surgeries and stuff, but it's become very serious in my, my mind. And so you're planning to do that? Yeah. When? Uh, pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> you're just gonna, I mean, yeah, it's, how, how, I mean, how deeply planned out is this, or are you just gonna launch? Well, no, I, I've, I mean, I know how to walk, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You also do some speaking. Yeah, I, um, I do a lot of talks now at schools for, um, for the kids at schools, mostly colleges and universities. But I would like to do more high schools, um, just because I love talking to the young children. And it's something about the kids, they just listen to me. I don't know why people listen to me. Maybe they just imagine that I have a wide variety of experiences, which is you know, different than most of the people who are trying to give them advice. They're sort of coming always from the same mold, and I'm coming from a different path, so I find that they listen to me, and if I can give them you know, something good to hear, I think it'll help them. Can we do one last thing? Yeah. I'm gonna call an audible here. Okay. Uh, you and I are going to do, in different styles, a um, Top stock blind, okay? 
Yeah. Okay. So uh, that was code for what I'm about to show you. Uh, I have a deck of Maddie's cards, and if you haven't seen these, I don't know if we can get a camera on these. Uh, Maddie drew these himself. Can we get, is that camera over there? Can you get up close to this? The back design, which Maddie drew here, is a, there we go, uh, fan, a royal flush fanned out being held by a stump. <laughs> well, I, I call it a hand. A hand? <laughs> well, I, fair enough, on, fair enough. On the box, well, the, mo the motto on the box is play the hand life dealt you. And I want to show a royal flush, so. Great. <laughs> uh, so, I was just going to show briefly, uh, when you study foundational sleight of hand magic as a kid, as I did, you learn basic techniques. This is a, an overhand shuffle, okay? And they'll, books will say, with your thumb and your fingers, grab the ends of the pack and just slap down like this. Nah, nah, nah. And um, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, actually. Uh, do you, you want to use my deck? No, no. <laughs> And what I'm actually doing, though, is uh, what magicians would call a blind or a false shuffle. I'm really shuffling the cards, but I'm controlling uh, a few cards. And in this case, uh, if we look at the top, I have, even though I've shuffled the cards several times, that's two, that's three, that's all four aces, right? So it's just that's a blind shuffle, a control shuffle. I shuffle, 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 but I've kept the four cards on top. And now, just to show you how Matty had to reinvent sleight of hand for himself, I'm going to have Matty do the same technique. Well, I've just been shuffling, but <laughs> maybe I can do something. I think that should get it. I think we should have an ace, another ace, another ace, another ace. Thank you. Matty's your bear. Thank you.